Hey everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Now in today's video we're going to examine one of the more mysterious locations from the Wheel of Time universe, the Tower of Genjai. We're going to take a look at what it is, what's inside, and then we're going to talk about how it shows up in the books. Now quickly before we get started, I want to thank the video sponsor Bespoke Post. If you're not familiar with what Bespoke Post is, it is a monthly subscription service in which they send you a whole bunch of cool shit. This month, I got a distillery kit. So basically, you can put your own liquor in this. They have the wood that you can stick in here and then you put your liquor in this and let it sit for 10 days and then you have an aged liquor that actually tastes amazing. They also sent me these really cool spinny glasses where you can, they're actually bourbon glasses, which I am excited about because I like to drink bourbon. So I probably will not be using it for the aging. I will be probably filling it with my favorite Woodford Reserve and then putting a little ice in here and drinking it. So stuff like that you get every month for a really low cost. They get it cheap because they get tons of it and they ship it out to everybody. You get a new box with new stuff every month. I've gotten bottle openers, knives. I, I told you guys before, I don't ever pitch anything that I don't personally use, and this service is awesome. If you wanna check out Bespoke Post, click the link in the description of the video. It helps support the channel and you get some really cool shit. So check that out. Now let's get into the video. Let's first hit the spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through the final book of the series, A Memory of Light. If you have not finished all of the books in the Wheel of Time series, turn off this video, come back to it. It'll still be here. You've been warned. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into everything that we know about the Tower of Genjai from the Wheel of Time. The Tower of Genjai is a solid metal tower that stands about 200 feet high. The tower has no windows, no doors, and no openings of any kind. In fact, there are no markings on it either. It's just a completely smooth, metallic looking tower sticking out of the ground. Now the tower sits right off the River Arenel. It's about 10 days up river from Whitebridge. Now it's often used as a marker for river traders to kind of give them an idea of how far away from Whitebridge they are, because it can be seen from the river by passing ships. Now it technically sits inside the borders of Andor, but it's not a very populated area and there are no real settlements around it, so nobody really knows that it's Andor anyway. But that all describes the physical location and appearance, but what actually is it? Well, that's a difficult question to answer because we're given so little information, but it can probably best be described as a portal between the real world and the world of the Aelfin and Eelfin, the or the snakes and foxes. The Aelfin and the Eelfin, or the snakes and foxes as they're often referred, can probably best be described as extra-dimensional beings. They are from a different dimension or world from the real world of the story, and because of this, they are very different from our characters, and their world follows a different set of rules. The Aelfin are one of the groups that inhabit the world on the other side of the portal of the Tower of Genjai. They resemble snakes and have the ability to answer questions. Now the Finns seem to have the ability to read the pattern. Both the Elfin and the Eelfin have this ability, so they can sort of see the past and the future, and that's probably a result of them being in a dimension outside of what is the normal pattern. Again, pretty heady, but that's what they are. The Tower of Genjai is just one way to meet the Eelfin, though. Another way is through a Tirangrial that's in the Stone of Tyr. The redstone doorframe Tirangrial, it grants access to the realm of the Aelfin. However, when you're using the doorframe, there is a protection of sorts by an ancient treaty and agreement between men and the Finns. If that door is taken, the one in the Stone of Tyr, the Aelfin will answer three questions truthfully, although those questions must be asked with care, as the questions about the shadow will often lead to you getting killed, and frivolous questions will lead to some type of punishment. In return for the answers, the Aelfin will absorb memories and feelings from those who come. The Aelfin, though, are another group that occupies that world, and they appear to be humanoid foxes. Similar to the Aelfin, they have another way to enter their domain other than the Tower of Genjai, and that's through a redstone Terangrial that was once in Roideon. But Moraine took it to Kyrian where it blew up and it's not there anymore. The Aelfin, they actually grant wishes rather than answer questions, but a bargain must be struck before asking. Otherwise, the Eelfin are going to take their own price, 
in a way that's often dangerous for the person asking. Ask Matt about that one. Now, one thing that remains consistent between both the Aelfin and the Eelfin, however, is they have the same weaknesses. They can't be damaged by normal weaponry. It's just going to pass right through them as though they're mist. But iron will connect with them on their skin and it will damage them. They also can be charmed by the playing of music and they become entranced by it. So they sort of start dancing around. Additionally, they are blinded by fire and intense light. The realm of the Finns has very different rules to our world as well. For one, the physics seem to work differently there. Passages do not always follow strict rules. They appear to be malleable for the Finns, so they can sort of change where they go and where they lead. In one sense of direction really won't work because sometimes going forward and then backwards will take you to a different place. It won't take you back to where you came from. The best course of action there is sometimes just to be random. Again, that's why Matt did well. Now, one question that's never truly answered in the story is how there came to be a connection between that world and the real world. We know that the Aes Sedai in the Age of Legends were certainly aware of the other world as they had a name for it. And obviously, Tarangriol were constructed to facilitate the moving back and forth between those realms. The land of the Finns was called Sindhal, which actually translates in the old tongue to Neverland. Take what you will from that. It can be assumed that it was the Aes Sedai who struck the bargain with the Finns for the two redstone doorways, as the Forsaken not only seemed to understand the rules of those worlds, but they constructed Tarangriol to begin with, so if there was going to be a bargain through those doorways, it would make sense that they made them. However, the Tower of Genjai seems to be older than the Age of Legends and perhaps has a connection in the same era as the Portal Stones. We really can't be certain. The only evidence for this is that both the Tower of Genjai and the Portal Stones served to move people and things to other dimensions other than the real world. Were they built at the same time? I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, we don't really get a great answer for that. Definitely let me know in the comments of the video. Now, one thing in the story that appears to be inspired by the Tower of Genjai and the world of the Fens is the children's game of snakes and foxes. Let's first start with the rules of the game. The game board is marked with what appears to be a web-like structure with arrows that point certain directions on the web that show the possible movements. Now, some of these paths move in one direction, some are multi-directional, so you can go back and forth. And then there are 10 wooden discs with a wavy line inscribed on them. Those denote the snakes. And then there are 10 discs marked with a triangle and those denote the foxes. Lastly, there are two black discs that denote the human players. Dice are rolled by each player for their own movement as well as the movements of the snakes and foxes. The game starts by drawing a triangle with a wavy line right through it and then saying courage to strengthen, fire to bind, music to dazzle, and iron to bind. Now the goal of the game is to move your piece to the edge of the web and then all the way back without being touched by one of the snakes or the foxes. Now adults are all aware that the game is impossible to win without cheating, but children will try and win the game over and over until they eventually figure that out. The rules of this game very closely follow the rules of the world of the Finns, and it's likely that it got its rule set from the ways to enter and leave the land of the Finns. The Tower of Genjai is one such way, and just as starting in the game of Snakes and Foxes, the way to open the otherwise impenetrable tower is to use a bronze knife and draw a triangle with a wavy line through it, just like the game. That will open the portal and allow you to enter their world. And then of course, iron, fire, music, and courage are all the things that you're gonna to need to survive interactions with the Finns. Now the interior world of the Snakes and Foxes is also very similar to the game. It can be somewhat described as a web, and it's considered just as impossible to leave. Although... The first mentions of the Tower of Genjai come in the Eye of the World, when Rand, Matt, and Tom are sailing down the Arenel with Bail Doman's ship, the Spray. They see the tower and Bale tells them that it's used as a way marker on the way to Whitebridge by river traders. The next mention comes in Shadow Rising, when Slayer is running from Perrin in the World of Dreams, and then he enters the tower. Perrin is warned not to follow, so he doesn't. Later in the story, Matt, Tom, and Noel, who is Jane Varstrider, enter the tower using what they've learned from the rules of snakes and foxes as they attempt to rescue Moraine. Now, Matt's luck proves vital as they navigate the corridors by luck in the Finn's realm, and eventually Matt is forced to make a sacrifice of his eye, and Noel sacrifices his life so that they can escape. 
Matt realizes that he was given the Ashandari as a means to leave the realm when he went through the Redstone Doorway all the way back in Shadow Rising. And then so he uses that to cut open a doorway and then him, Tom, and Maureen get out of the tower. So it does turn out that the rules from the children's game are actually probably based in some type of a reality from what it's actually like to go to the world of the fins. And that's very consistent with Robert Jordan's idea of the Wheel of Time, where you've got legends that turn into myths and myths, right? You've got these things that kind of move through. And that's where we get all this past information that kind of goes through a game of telephone. So now it's a children's game, but it was once the way to get in and out of that place. So that's it for the Tower of Genji. What did you guys think of the tower? Do you like how mysterious it was? Do you wish we got more information about it? Was there something I left out? Let me know in the comments of the video. Also, again, make sure to check out Bespoke Post, the video's sponsor. Some of the boxes are flippin' amazing, and I'm a huge fan of that service. Go pick it up. Also, check out the Patreon if you enjoy the content here. Me making these videos really wouldn't be possible without support from people like you. And Patreon is the best way to do that. Ad revenue is crazy all over the place with YouTube. Sometimes it's nothing at all. And so Patreon is the best way to support not only this channel, but also the greatblight.com. Big update on that, by the way, too. We are adding a lot of wiki pages. I'm getting pretty excited about uh, the where that's going. We're kind of moving past some of the characters and into different places and events. Hopefully very soon that will be a fully functional wiki with all kinds of really cool maps. So that'll be awesome. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content on the Wheel of Time. That's all I do here on this channel. Make sure to check out my hundreds of older videos on the Wheel of Time as well. Thank you everybody for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free, crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?